Zap's my partner. I wake up with him every morning and he goes to sleep next to me every night and just curls up at my feet. So he's one that as long as he's getting physical and intellectual engagement every day, he'll he'll be kind of a pet dog whenever it comes to, you know, time to go to bed. The training side though is you have to be real consistent with the words you say and how you do things and, you know, is he always sitting before he goes outside? Is he waiting for a command to go outside? And all these things that with a pet dog, if you aren't paying attention to it, it degrades their actual training because for them, there's no reason why you have to listen to me 100% and be 100% responsive whenever you're out here on a rubble pile, but it's only 80% with that expectation where you're at home. So you have to make sure that, especially with obedience and especially with commands, you're consistent on what it is that you're saying and how you're treating them so that transitions back out here to the field whenever it's time to go. All right, come on, bud. It's time to go. Let's go. Lazy moments. Zap has made my life easy. He goes with me as many places as I can get him. And he's really, truly one of the biggest parts of my life compared to every other relationship. Probably one of the most important relationships I've ever had as well. Doing good, buddy. Almost there. Matt and Zap are an exceptional response team. They are very experienced. They have responded to many different disasters from Hurricane Harvey to flooding out in Junction. When we send them to work, everyone knows we're gonna get the very highest quality work from both Matt and Zap. And so we love to send them. some work. As far as the canine side goes, we use this facility for real life mimicked training. So we have our dogs that are running all over and inside these rubble piles and some of the other structures that are outside so that the dogs as well as our newer handlers can get just a, an idea of what that real world collapse structure work is gonna look like and feel like and sound like. And this facility allows us to get as close as possible to that level of response. Let's try this, buddy. Let's see where you're gonna go. Urban search and rescue dogs are absolutely the fastest way that we can locate people who have been trapped after a disaster. The rubble piles that you see zap search, we can search that entire pile in probably about 20 minutes. If I go out there with cameras and listening devices, I could spend days searching that yep. same structure before I know if I have rescued and recovered all the people that were affected in that structure. 20 minutes is the difference for getting somebody definitive medical care. That's huge for those people who are trapped and for those families who are waiting for answers. And we couldn't get that without dogs. Their abilities are just something that we cannot duplicate in ever, any way. So the dog's job is to smell that person, get as close as they can to that person, and then bark until we arrive at that location and can start to make a plan for how to get the people out of there. Boy, what a good dog. What a good dog. Texas A&M Task Force One is one of 24 disaster teams that are associated with FEMA. Uh, we respond at their request around the country. And we currently have 27 teams, that's one canine and one handler, on our task force. Some of those teams are in training. It's, many of those teams are certified and responding to deployments. Uh, one of the things that makes our task force unique is the number of dogs that we get from shelters or rescues to do this job. And we think that brings a lot for us to the table. We love to see these dogs who would make terrible pets go on to become productive members of society and do something really amazing that the average dog can't do. I am Leah White, Operations Supervisor at Aggieland Humane Society. Prior to having Christy at our, almost at our disposal, um, we had to reach out to numerous groups, say, hey, is anybody in your on your team looking for a dog, et cetera, et cetera. Um, now that we have 
you know, such a strong task force program here, w interested in shelter dogs, we can reach out and say, hey, we think we have some potential. When can we schedule to get you to look at this dog? And it's wonderful that she's willing to take the dogs and evaluate them outside of the shelter environment to really see what they may do. And then she also has an avenue for the dogs that might not necessarily make it as a disaster dog, that they can go on to working dog positions and she's helping us fill those voids that we have right now. What somebody may have thought as just, just an obnoxious dog, I can't handle it, I don't want it, a, th a throwaway essentially, going on to save the lives of people. Um, if that was, if that was your family member that a shelter dog that now has gone on to rescue work, they saved, I mean, that's invaluable. So how do you put a dollar value on a dog that just saved someone's life? Um, and here, it, it might have just gotten passed by or someone at one point in time didn't want that dog. You know, if you're lucky, like the Humane Society we have here, it's a no-kill shelter, so they might just spend a long time in the shelter before somebody adopts them. Definitely not the case across the state, right? There are plenty of dogs that are euthanized just to make more space for more dogs coming in. And so if you could potentially basically save a dog's life and give them a job, and now they have a purpose and they have a home, that's something that I would much rather do that just on an emotional level dogs from shelters for me and i think for a lot of folks on our team are, are much more preferable it's much more ideal setup to be able to get a canine partner and so that's definitely what i'm hoping to do whenever it comes time to train up the next dog in our house is be able to go to the humane society or any of the shelters that are around texas and actually find my next partner from there so one of the many reasons that we like to find dogs from shelters to be able to do this job is we know that the types of dogs we select that are going to be successful in our program will never be successful as a pet. They will never find a family that is going to put up with them leaping off the top of the refrigerator because I think my toy is up here somewhere. They just won't make it. And so the dogs that we pull and make into these elite responders probably would have been euthanized had they not found a program like this. And to be able to see them then become kind of the Olympic athlete of the dog detection world, that is so rewarding to get to say, it saved your life and now you get to go save lives. That's really cool.